caucuses are about to get underway. Some of the candidates have been focused on Iowa for weeks now, hosting rallies, visiting diners, and getting as much face time as possible. So how is it resonating with voters there as they prepare to cast their votes? RJ O'Brien has a look. The first votes of the 2024 election are officially upon us. And it all begins right here in Iowa. You might be asking, why does this sometimes snowy state, home to fewer people than New York or Los Angeles, feel like it's the center of the political universe? And what's driving you? To answer that, you should first meet Kendall Ross. Recording in progress. All right, we are rolling. Okay, Robert. stand by. Um, where are you talking to us from right now? I am in the lovely city of Des Moines. Right now, I'm in Des Moines, Iowa, um, in my hotel room where I've been for the past uh, few months. <laughs> Wait, you've lived in that hotel room for months, that exact hotel room? I've been in this hotel room since August, so it's been a while. Kendall is laser focused on Iowa. Gotta go. Traveling from event to event, watching candidates work the room for months. Kendall, an ABC News 2024 campaign embed, has been our eyes and ears in the Hawkeye State as voters prepare for the crucial first in the nation caucuses here. Because Iowa goes first, they really do take the responsibility of kind of setting the tone for the rest of the race uh, very seriously. And the tone here recently has been one of nonstop politicking. Well, it's great to be here in Iowa. Hello, Iowa. I'm thrilled to be back. Good to see you guys. Good to be back in Iowa. GOP White House hopefuls have descended on Iowa for more than a year, many making repeated stops here even before their presidential campaigns were official. Good to be with you. Good to be back in Iowa. Including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who for months has been concentrated on outperforming expectations in Iowa and is endorsed by the state's popular governor, Kim Reynolds. Donald Trump is running on his issues. Nikki Haley is running on her donors issues. I'm the only one running on your issues. But former President Trump is still dominating in the polls here. Despite facing four felony indictments, pleading not guilty to all. The former president running an even more aggressive Iowa playbook compared to his 2016 bid, pushing voters to go out and caucus for him. We're not taking any chances, right? I think there's several people who do a good job, but uh, Trump, Trump's a guy. I think I could support Vivek Ramaswamy or DeSantis, but uh, Trump has a record of success in the White House. One voter even directly telling candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who's also invested heavily in Iowa, she won't give up on Trump. How do we not go caucus for him? How do we not vote for the guy that they're trying to tear apart? But not every Iowan is sold on Trump. I think if Donald Trump gets elected, I think that that is um, something that we need to have a conversation about. So that scares me. I don't want to waste my vote and vote for him. And then something happened to him. It's a tough call. I like Vivek. I like the guy. He's got some pretty good ideas. He's pretty smart. With DeSantis, he says and does what he's, he, he does what he says. Whichever candidate they settle on, Iowans won't technically go to the polls. Because here, voters don't have a primary, they caucus. To pick their candidate, Republicans in Iowa gather in school gyms like this one. Others go to places of worship. Some go to private homes. Unlike a primary in a state like New Hampshire, the polls aren't open for most of the day in Iowa. Voters have to show up on time at 7 p.m. They first listen to speeches on behalf of the various candidates, and then they write down who their choice is on paper ballots. But they do it in a big room that's full of their friends and neighbors. So peer pressure is a real factor. Those paper ballots then get counted on site, and the results are reported to the state Republican Party. The main reason Iowans caucus is just that's how it's always been. And because for decades Iowa has chosen its nominee first, some see it as a bellwether for the rest of the nation. Really an accident of history. Uh, starting in 1972, Iowa ended up being the first on the presidential nominating calendar. So everyone started looking at, well, how are candidates doing in Iowa? And that's made a lot of difference who's moved forward and who hasn't in the nomination process. But for Democrats, Iowa is no longer the official first stop on the campaign calendar. 
The eyes have it. After a near unanimous decision last year by the Democratic National Committee, South Carolina, a state with a more diverse population, will now be the first Democratic primary. But Iowa's caucuses still hold their first-in-the-nation status for Republicans, and doing well here can show the rest of the country a candidate has momentum. We actually, as a state, aren't that good at finally picking presidents, but we pick who isn't going to be president. Iowa really, its purpose, in a way, is to winnow the field. She has a point. In the past, Iowa has had a checkered track record of picking winners. In 2016, the last Republican contest, Ted Cruz won. Donald Trump came in second. How about 2012, when Rick Santorum won here? He narrowly beat Mitt Romney, who eventually went on to become the nominee. One more, 2008. Mike Huckabee trounced the other candidates here. Mitt Romney came in second, but neither of them became the nominee. John McCain, who came in fourth, did. Now, Iowa has propelled some campaigns to prominence. Also in 2008, in the Democratic caucuses, Barack Obama handily won the state. George Bush also won here in 2000. The place where Iowa really made its name was in 1976 with Jimmy Carter. He basically decided to camp out in Iowa and just go town to town. And that's what set him on the way to the White House. Nowadays, Trump's repeated rallies have been a hallmark of his so far successful Iowa strategy. But voter-to-voter, grip-and-grin, retail politics still dominates here. The state fair is one of the main political events of the year. And regardless of whether you think perpetual political attention should be heaped on White House hopefuls' attempts to pick up Iowan votes by riding motorcycles or rapping Lose yourself in the music. or flipping pork, as of this election, the Hawkeye State isn't going anywhere. This will be the first stop for whichever Republican will ultimately take on President Biden. But don't be surprised if on caucus night, a few candidates declare their performance in Iowa a win. For a DeSantis or, or Haley, they at least want second place. You know that they're kind of yeah. fighting for second place right now. So depending on the candidate, a second place, third place finish, they could consider that a win. Uh, yes. You know, but for the Trump camp, obviously a win is winning the caucus. You know, they've done this twice before. Everyone, Everyone's uh, win looks different. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.